coming over to Manitoba, really need a local uh, knowledge. I think that looks good. It's not right for the wind, but... And we were fortunate to have a good friend of mine, uh, Jeff Sharan from Missouri. Uh, we go way back, and he's been coming up here over 20 years, and uh, the perfect guide for, for what we needed in Manitoba. We could have rafts below us, we could have rafts above us, and so, you know, we're going to have traffic from both directions. <laughs> take him, take him. Oh, nice shot. The highlight for this hunt for me was the opportunity to hunt with two very experienced waterfowlers, Wade and Mike, and to show them a style of hunting that they hadn't really experienced. Man, they're out there today, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're all, so, that's so kind much of the line that flying been... close with these points. Watch him, Mike, coming up behind you. See him? Shooting. You take him. Very Good nice. Shot. All right. Oh, he did die. Oh, he did die. Uh, right Fine. behind you, Elvis. Boom. Yes. Got him. All right. That was cool. Way to go, Elvis. He, he did that He's yesterday, that too, down. didn't he? He yeah. speared him, didn't he? Just <laughs> I think you know, we had better better traffic yesterday afternoon. You yeah. know, one option we yeah. might do, guys, is uh, go in for lunch a little early, and uh, so we're back out here for the uh, potential afternoon flight. What do you think? Can we leave the decoys out? Sure, we can. Missouri native Jeff Sharan has been a key volunteer at Ducks Unlimited for a long time, and he's no stranger to DUTV either. And as you might expect from a man with Jeff's conservation pedigree, he's got a healthy perspective on the business of protecting waterfowl habitat. I think my most special moments with DU were the times that I spent as chairman of the Conservation Programs Committee. I felt like our committee asked for and, and received from staff some great long-range plans that are in existence today. Now having stepped away from the leadership of that committee, it's great to me to see that we have those plans in place. They're being followed. Uh, they've been written and created by the brightest waterfowl scientists in the country. I just have a great feeling about where Ducks Unlimited is today and with these plans in place, where they're headed. Most of my duck hunting career has been focused on puddle ducks. You know, I'm a, I live in the Mid-South and I've hunted Arkansas and Missouri and, and mostly mallards and other dabblers. Oh yeah, oh man. That's our green wings again. That's all those green wings again. Uh, I didn't have much experience or have not had much experience on uh, diving ducks. Well, I don't see any color on them. Maybe they're redheads, they just look brown. brown. I, I, I just can't believe they wouldn't be red. This is the moss painting. This is, I think, where the guy comes and, and sits in his boat and paints the reeds and the chop and the canvas back. So we're here. I feel like our strategy uh, for the hunt was, uh, was a good strategy, even though uh, the ducks didn't fly that well. Shoot them. Uh, we did have some action. Now we just get one. We got two. Well. And, and what ducks did fly, uh, did fly that pattern that we predicted point to point. We had some uh, flying that pattern, see our decoys and come straight in. Well, what's the score? Three puddlers and two divers? Four, four, puddlers. four, four puddlers, puddlers and two divers. There's no better conservation tool in the field than a well-trained retriever. Here's how Drake the DU dog does it. The ability to read your dog is an important skill to master for any handler. You need to be able to read your dog to understand really what they're thinking and if they're comprehending the lesson. What is your dog telling you? Dogs don't talk, but they always communicate. So we must learn to read the dog's subtle signals through body language. Understand their silent language and you've tapped the dog's mind. Let's take a look at some of the canine communicators as they apply to hunting dog training. First, a dog's tail is an attitude barometer. Too high, and you have a dominant, assertive student on your hand that may think they're in control. Too low, tucked between the legs, the tail is indicating fear, apprehension, too much force in training. No learning's going on here. This tail is indicating a relaxed dog with balanced attitude, perfect for learning. The tail looks to be parallel to the body. 
The licking of the lips is an excellent indicator of biddability, the willingness to cooperate. You may see the subtle licking of the dog's lips after a correction or a scolding. Lip licking is a signal that you're being accepted as the pack leader. A negative signal would be that a dog would not hold your gaze in training. A dog that breaks his attention away from the trainer is resisting the lesson and avoiding the authority. You need focused eye contact from the dog in training to be effective. To make progress, we will need to establish pack dominance. Once respected, the handler becomes a pack leader and focus will be awarded. Of course, there are other indicators of both positive and negative communicated signals. Learn to read your dog's language of silent communication for both expression and body language. See you next time.